Hello fellow mutants. Blah, blah, blah. Hello fellow mutants as I I butchered my intro. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And apparently there's this uh um Tin Urso from Rogue One from Star Wars Rogue One has met a Star Wars Rebels character. And we missed it. Now, the only time that I am aware, and this could be the thing that they're talking about, the only time I'm aware that Jen Urso has met a character oh, from Star Wars Rebels was in the Force of Destiny show that was very short lived. Highlighting the ladies of uh, the female heroes of the Star Wars galaxy. And unless it was like, if it's like another time that they're referring to, that's it, like the only time where I can see like a Rogue, uh, Jin Erso meeting a Rogue One character. Now, Jin Erso meeting, I'm sorry, I'm a member of the Ghost Crew. And it makes sense because both Jin Erso and the Ghost Crew were active around the same time. So let's give this a reach, shall we? Jin Erso was instrumental in stealing the Death Star plans during Rogue One and Star Wars Story, but the heist of, on Scarif was not the first time she aided the Re Rebel Alliance in Star Wars canon. While most of Jin Erso's life between Saw Gerrera finding her and the events of Rogue One was not finished out during the film, other projects in Star Wars canon have divulged the more significant events in her life. Due to the, her upbringing by Saul, Jin was constantly around rebellion activities. If only on, if only on the, <clears throat> excuse me, the more extremist side of Saul's partisans. The Parsons did not officially work with the Rebel Alliance during the dark times of the Star Wars galaxy, but the goals often aligned. This has been shown at length with Saul Guerrero in Star Wars, often using more extreme methods to reach the same purpose of the various Rebel cells, parts of the, of the Flooding Alliance. Due to her upbringing around the Persons, the character has been shown to help members of the Rebellion before the events of Rogue One and Jin Erso's tragic death. So, which member of the Force crew did she work with? And it looks like they are going to re um, reference that Forces of Destiny show that's been out for like a few years. So, if you guys haven't seen that episode, then... This will contain spoilers. Um. So I know who it is. I just don't know who it is. Any, but let's keep going for argument's sake. This team up is an animation. Isn't the animation sort accidental allies as part of the Star Wars Force of Destiny? Force of Forces of Destiny was a canon collection of anime stories primarily centered on female characters of the Star Wars galaxy, while Jin Erso appearing in one of the episodes. In this sort, Jin Erso comes across the Imperial device that is being sought after by none other than Sabine Rain from on Star Wars Rebels before Rogue One. Sabine loses the device after being chased by stormtroopers with Jin finding it and attempting to take it for her own, likely to deliver it to Saul and the Parsons. After a brief confrontation, Jin decides to give the device back to Sabine, who was part of Phoenix Squadron, Phoenix Squadron and instrumental to the, the formation of the Rebel Alliance in Star Wars Rebels. While only a short story the idea that Jin aided the rebellion before the events of Rogue One adds more context to her character in the in her character arc in 2016. So how accidental 
allies fits into the Star Wars timeline. And before I read that, The Forces of Destiny wasn't exactly a bad show. Like, my favorite episodes has to contain Ahsoka. Like, there was one episode where uh, she's trying to um, learn how to, like, use two lightsabers at once. And Yoda said, like, it ends up helping her. And I master, like, begin to master that. And then the other episode was when, like, she was, tra- like, help. She helped in Astra Berger's training, Jedi training. She took out his kyber crystal, told, uh, um, Astra to find it. And she activated her lightsabers as she swung at him. Of course, not like trying to kill him, but to teach him a lesson that he is just as powerful without his lightsaber as he is with his lightsaber. And that was a pretty cool, powerful message. And um, I dig that. But at least, like I said, my favorite episodes of the Forces of Destiny were with Ahsoka. So there's that. Anyways, getting back to this with how accidental the accidental allies episode fits into the Star Wars um, timeline. One that is not abundantly clear is accident in accidental accidental allies is how the tale fits into the Star Wars timeline. However, there is a few clues throughout the short that can be utilized to place it around three BBY. For one, Jin does not seem much younger than when she was seen in Rogue One, meaning it cannot be too far before the events of the film. Similarly, Star Wars Rebels takes place between 5 years to 5 BBY to 0 BBY, meaning Accidental Allies does not take place more than 5 years before Rogue One, as Sabine is already clearly part of the ghost crew in the episode. So, for those of you who doesn't know what BBY and or like ABY stands for, BBY means so. If you guys watched A New Hope, which is technically the very first Star Wars movie to ever be made at the time, it was just called Star Wars. The final battle of Star of that Star Wars film has the rebels. Um. Taking a fight to the um, Death Star, who was over the planet of Yavin, and that's commonly known as the Battle of Yavin. So BBY is the before the Battle of Yavin, and ABY is after the, the Battle of Yavin. For those of you who didn't know, oh, and there's more to this article. The biggest giveaway, though, is a bean's hair. Throughout the Star Wars Rebels, Sabine's hair color and length changes numerous times. In the Forces of Destiny short, Sabine's hair is mid-length and colored dark blue with light blue tips. That matches her hairstyle from Star Wars Rebels Season 2, which is prominently set a year between 4 BBY, 4 BBY and 3 BBY. As such, this place is Jin Erso, meaning with the bean around three to four years before Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Showcasing the self titled owner's cap- capacity of heroics long before she gave her life for the Rebel Alliance. And even though I haven't seen like the Forces of Destiny in like literally years, I haven't I don't think I've seen it since like it came out. And, um, that episode wasn't, like, it was a pretty good episode. It wasn't bad. I actually, like, I have to say a part of me enjoyed that <laughs> when I was out. I don't know how I feel about it now, but, like, um, I mainly enjoyed that when I was out. And, um, this article does make a good point about how, like, since Jane Urso was part of Sakurero's partisans, now 
Saul Guerrero and the Parsons did help the Red Bull Alliance here and there. We saw it in, like, the Rebel show, the uh, Jedi uh, uh, um, Fallen Order game. I'm making my way through Jedi Survivor off stream. I uh, will end up streaming that game, but I don't know if, like, um, Cal Kestis, um, if Saul Guerrero helps, like, shows up and helping the Cal Kestis, essentially, as well. In Jedi Survivor, but there's been a few times when Saul Guerrero helped the Rebel Alliance. So I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Jin Erso has helped the Red Alliance a few times unknowingly. So, yeah, that episode's on YouTube. You guys can easily find it um, if you guys want it. Um, that episode, again, is called Accidental Allies. But, um,. There's, like, that one time Jin Erso, that we know of, had any interactions with the ghost crew, essentially. So, that said, what do you beautiful people have to say? Let me know in the comment section down below. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Be kind one another. And I might actually also link the episode in the description for you guys, too, if I can find it on YouTube. But that said, love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Be kind, be kind to one another. I will talk to you, fellow mutants. Later.